Welcome everybody back to another exciting show of the About That Water Podcast. I am your host, Anthony. And for those of you who are new to the show, I want to say thank you. A lot of you who are new to the show actually came to me and say how much value you have received from it. And I continuously uh, try to see as much content as I can. And as you see, I actually simmering over my words because I am nervous all the time. But One of the cool things I love about this show is that I can constantly keep coming to you and provide you with information. And for those of you who have been to the show, always know that I try my best to give as much value as I can uh, to all of you who are listening. So one of the things that I definitely want to say thank you to, I actually want to continue on this thing, this gratitude movement, because Uh, I did have like a nice deep conversation with a couple of people during happy hour one time and, you know, just sitting around having drinks, eating French fries. And one of the things that I was thinking about, can you really have gratitude without comparing yourself to others? Some people say yes. I am on the fence to constantly keep saying no, because you either you could actually compare yourself to your past self. So say when you were younger. Uh, you did not have toys or you did not have something, did not have food in the refrigerator. You did not have a piece of toast to even go with the butter that you have in a refrigerator. The butter just sitting there from a prior bakery or something like that that you guys were having. But you had everything to make the sandwich without the bread. And so you're constantly running away from those moments. And so now that you're older, you're actually saying, hmm, I'm actually happy about the things that I have right now. So I do want you to take a moment, if you're actually driving, uh, or actually listen to this while you're on the move, or even cleaning up, is to really take time to say thank you for one thing. I just want to start there. A lot of people who have been on this gratitude movement for a long time. Y'all can go on and on about the things that you're grateful for. But I really want to challenge those of you who are listening to this and actually having a moment to really reflect and think about the things that really matter to you and be thankful for what have brought you here today. And honestly, to get yourself here today, you actually had to quit a lot of things. Quit people. You had to quit jobs. You had to quit relationships. You had to quit something to get you here where you are today. Because if you're hoarding everything, you're constantly staying in the same place. You Have you ever seen cops when they're trying to chase down somebody? When they're chasing somebody, that person that's running away from them usually don't have that much on them. But the cop has the the safety vests on, they have the pepper spray, they have the uh, their own personal gun, they have the flashlight, they have handcuffs. They're running around with a lot of stuff on their body. So could you imagine running around and trying to move to that next level with everything on you? It's usually tough to do that. This leads me up to this personal topic for today, which is, can you really retire? The reason why I ask this question is because a lot of people stay at their jobs for 30 plus years. And when it comes to staying at their job for 30 plus years, that means that they already retired from the job. They will get the money for their, their pension for staying there for so long. And then the next thing you know, they come back to work. And I always ask them, why do you come back to work after you already retired from here? Um, because I do work with a lot of older folks. They're very knowledgeable uh, in what they do. They love their work. Their work is uh, magnificent. Um, and the only thing that is a very common trait is that they're doing it for their children. Now, I think I did an episode talking about having your children um, almost like you're, because you're not setting those boundaries. And does it feel like you're a failure as a parent 
to actually say, hmm, what did I do wrong as a parent that my child cannot live and survive on their own? Why am I sacrificing an additional 10 to 20 years after my retirement to support my own child, an adult child at that point? Now, granted, there are some uh, children that cannot survive on their own. I understand that. But I'm talking about those that are able to do this. Now, I have talked about this before in other episodes, but I want to bring this topic up again because it's one of those topics that that kind of gets under my skin. And I'm constantly thinking of what can a parent do to help mold their child to not want to come back home or live home, even during their downturn. Now, it's good to have an open door policy to allow your child to come back to say, hey, you know, I I just need a place to crash for like a month or two. But not to the point where you have to come out of retirement to go back to work just because your child can't go or doesn't feel like or for some odd reason feel as though they are entitled to not go back to work. And that is one of the things that uh, I will hope to dive into today. But before I get into that, I would like to say thank you to the customer sales rep, Chelsea. She's been constantly on me about these surveys for the climate, I mean, not climate surveys. These are like surveys for the job well done. And this is how she actually gets uh, bonuses just from people filling out surveys, which also got me thinking, what is it about your current job And how can your job actually give you feedback besides your supervisor, besides your manager? Are there customers that you have helped in the past in your current job? And how are they actually relaying to you that you are doing a great job? And how can the customer help you go to that next level? So say if you're looking for another job, say if you're looking for that promotion, How can you take a customer's perspective of what you're doing and relay that up to your supervisor or your manager or whoever looks at your day-to-day work? Now, the cool thing, the reason why I I brought up this customer sales rep is because the first time I talked to her, she was like real cool, didn't give me anything, just kind of like, hey, here's here's your keys you know, great customer service through and through. So then the second time I go in there for service, she was like, you know, I'm actually going to school for business. And um, I actually try to give out a little something, a little token. So when every person that's looking to do service, they come to me or remind them to come to me because there are other sales reps on the floor. Now, what she does is actually give out a little toy. Uh, which I thought was pretty cool. I don't show the toy now because I have it somewhere and I didn't bring it with me. But I thought it was actually pretty cool that she does like a little token to say thank you. So thank you again, Chelsea, for taking the time out to give me such a toy. And it always reminds me of the different services and the level of effort that you provide me uh, as a customer for the services that you provide. All right. So back to this show. Um, One of the things that I have to say, there are several reasons why a lot of people actually stay at their jobs for even 30 years. I mean, granted, you have the great resignation that's happening right now. A lot of people are actually looking to uh, quit their jobs because the quality of life has changed because they had a taste of what it is to be home. Now, that's one thing. Second thing a lot of people are changing jobs is because you have kids. This is a COVID pandemic. You have people that want to stay home with their children, take care of their family, and really have a sense of, uh, you know, just wanting to be home. You know, really taking time to live with your family because those moments you cannot get back because you're spending eight hours a day working for someone else's dream. You always hear that all the time. But a lot of times, even if you can help 
someone else achieve their dream while you achieve your dream. And more than likely your dreams are aligned together. So if you are a person of that's looking to hire someone, you wanna share your vision and your goals for that particular company and why they should join you. And when somebody is actually interviewing, the very first thing you have to ask them, are they looking for a job for a job or are they looking for a job because they really find the passion and the mission that you guys are providing that they want to be a part of? Now, if you can't answer that question, then what's the point of you even being an interviewer in the first place? You have to really want to bring that person on to your team. Uh, and not just to be on the team as a warm body to fill the position, but somebody that's really that really want to see this business go to the next level from their little position. And what they call them is a like almost a KPI. Just give them a key performance indicator to show them how they can go from what they're currently doing to that next level. If you cannot explain that short period of time within your interview process then it is just time to keep that moving. Because a lot of people that stay at the job, and again, I've, I've always asked the question of why they talk about their children first. Then the second question is, I mean, the second reason is more so because they love the mission. They love the work that they do and they find value and peace in everything that they do. The third reason that a lot of people usually stay at their jobs that I've asked multiple times is because the proximity to their houses. Uh, over and over again, I can always ask them, it's like, why would you take this, take a pay cut and come back to work? And they'd be like, well, it's close. It's close to, close to home. I'm only like 10 minutes away. No other job could provide them that satisfaction at their work. Plus they have good management staff. They have great benefits. Usually most people come back to work because of the health benefits, because they just can't afford to do it on their own. So these are the different things that keeps a lot of people at their jobs. Now, what keeps them away from their jobs, the reason why people quit, again, I went over it, staying home with family. They wanna stay home with the kids, teach the kids, grow them. And plus there are so many different options available right now to work remotely. Uh, I mean, granted, you might be doing something different, but if you're a hands-on person and love to touch things and really get your hands dirty, there are plenty of jobs out there. A lot of people are hiring for those. Some people are retiring from those particular types of jobs. So if you're young and you have passion Young-minded, though, because there, there are a lot of you who listen and say, well, I'm, I might not got the body I got, but I am ready for that new uh, action. I'm ready for change. But a lot of things that they, these different, I uh, guess you could say stipulations about age is very important to try to understand that you're always have you're always going to be judged regardless of what's going to happen to you whatever choice you decide to do but just make sure that you are choosing the thing that you want to do i know i've gone all over the place with this but these are the things that i'm constantly thinking about when it comes to understanding your mindset where you want to be in life, and can you really set those boundaries between you and your child or children uh, when it comes to retirement age? Because a lot of people say they want to stay home for their family um, and see their family. Yes, it's Thanksgiving coming around the corner, but you really have to look for yourself as well. Are you really taking care of yourself? Again, everybody, my name is Anthony. This is the About That Wallet podcast. I'm out.